Hello, this is Scott and uh, of Martech Talk and Trust Signals. And today I have with me Dave Trust from Constant Contact. He is the Director of Small Business Success. Thanks for joining, Dave. Hey, Scott. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And I know you have your own podcast and an important part of your job at Constant Contact is to help small businesses be successful. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I host a podcast for Constant Contact. It's called Be a Marketer. And the real premise behind the show is is really we're talking to uh, small business owners, outside experts. Uh, I'm sharing some insights as well with the goal of really helping small business owners and Constant Contact customers really uh, make sense of and understand how they're going to actually get things done and find the time for marketing. You know, time and intimidation are often the things that we hear from small business owners. Um, these are folks that are business owners first, marketers by necessity, uh, don't have marketing degrees, right? And so we're really focused on using the stories and hearing from real people and what they've done and how they've overcome challenges and how they've learned what works for them so that others can apply that information as well. Well, that's great. Well, I'm certain that um, a, a lot of small business owners, especially today, can feel a little overwhelmed by marketing, especially when they're hearing about AI and everyone's running to them and saying, hey, you know, you don't, you shouldn't have to hire a marketing agency anymore because you can use ChatGPT or, uh, you know, or, you know, uh, gosh, AI is going to, you know, cannibalize your business or, you know, uh, it's obviously a big change that's happened um, in a short period of time. And, and a lot of people have been affected and a lot of people are worried about it. Um, and small businesses are not immune from that. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, how in your experience in talking with small business owners, how they, how they seem to feel about this big change and, and uh, what advice you give? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And we actually, we did a, a survey or a, a study called um, Small Business Now. We do these reports every so often. And it was uh, in August of 2023. Um, but before that, two years prior, we actually um, talked about AI to small business owners. And it was actually had very little, little awareness. And if we cut to 2023, 74% uh, of small businesses actually had heard of it and, and wanted to leverage it for their businesses. So what we were seeing is really they're interested in it, but they just really need help understanding it and, and understanding what it really means for them and how they can apply that. Uh, about 25% of the people that we did speak to actually were applying it already. And so, you know, how we look at it, it's really about this opportunity for our customers and small businesses in general to really just work faster get things done more efficiently, uh, promote the things that are important to them so they can get back to doing what they what they do. And I think actually at the end of the day, I don't think it really matters that AI is kind of helping do that. I think it's really about like, what is the thing that you want to do and how can I do that most efficiently and, and most effectively and do that in a way that's going to you know be beneficial to my business. And I think that's what, uh, you know, how we look at it at Constant Contact. You know, um, you think about it, whether it relates to AI or almost any topic when businesses talked about the what what dominates the coverage and the discussion and the people quoted in the media, you know, it's the the Apples and the Microsofts and the the big companies across the board and, and that and the Amazons that 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 kind of eat up all the 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 uh the, the bandwidth and but we we both know that well, 99 percent plus of businesses in this country are small businesses and uh maybe uh if i'm a small business and and i'm trying to learn about ai um i might not feel like i'm represented uh in what's being discussed and how do i find the things that are relevant to me well a couple of things that i'll, I'll mention you know, constant contact just a little bit, because that's really, you know, when we think about what our mission is, right, we're really trying to help the small stand tall. And our goal, right, really is to do that by really providing online marketing tools and resources that are, are easier, more efficient, more effective for them. And we believe that a small business's success <laughs> really should be not driven by their marketing sophistication, right? And so we want to provide those tools that allow them to kind of focus on what they do best and then 
and that's running their business, right? So I think that's the place that we come at it from. And so when you start thinking about just AI in general, you've I think you've got kind of two ways, at least when you're getting your feet right to right, think about it. I think generative AI has really gotten a lot of talk recently, right? Because it's like, oh my God, you know, AI can create all of these things for me. Um, and then you've got the, what I actually think is more interesting and I think future moving forward will be uh, more beneficial to, to businesses, I think, is really that idea of um, how it can process data and give you recognized patterns and give you insights and allow you to uh, make better decisions with your business so you're getting better results, right? And I think those are kind of the two uh, roads that we go down. But I think with anything, you know, I look at what our job is in all of this and it's to make it more accessible because if you think of, you know, if you've played with ChatGPT, for example, how well you get something from it that is beneficial to you or, or, or useful really depends on how well you prompt it, <laughs> right? And so on many levels, now you're adding a step in here where you've got to figure out how to become a, a prompt engineer of sorts, right? Like, how do I tell this something so I'm getting something that's most useful back to me? And I, and I look at some of the work we've done with content generation, for example, we've tried to, one, eliminate that problem of like the blinking cursor or the blank page, whatever you want to call it, right? Where I don't know what to write. I don't know what to say in my email. I don't know what to say in my text. I don't know what to say in my you know social update, that type of thing. How can we take that, build on top of the chat GPT model with our own learnings from over, what, 28 years of doing this and seeing what works for small businesses and then take that and say, okay, like how can we simplify that process so that the user, our customer is just saying, okay, I want to write something. I want to write an announcement that is uh, promotional, or maybe it's funny, or maybe it's like, so you're just clicking a few things and then saying, here's what this thing should be about versus having to do the other thing where you're saying, pretend you're a world-class email marketer and use my day, like, you know, and, and kind of create something that gives you something more meaningful. We're, we're simplifying right. that process so that click of the button, you get a few options, you can, if you don't like them, you can get some more. Um, and it learns over time. And so you can, you know, copy that, just use it as it is, or make some edits, whatever the case may be. But you're getting to this place where, you know, the, the blank page was a problem to begin with. Well, when you get into a thing like ChatGPT, it's still kind of a blank page problem because you don't know how to interact with it yet, right? And I think, you know, of course that will evolve and change, but we're trying to make that easier. And I think that's that's one piece of it. When you think of the data piece, I think you know where we see things moving forward is a couple of things in terms of just you know being in a almost a more of an assistant, more of a, a coach, right? Like looking at things that are happening uh, with your customers and your business, and saying giving you um, advice for things to try next or things to do. Um, but then also the thing that excites me about it as we really start to get in, and I think this is more prevalent in the e-com world where you can actually really deliver on this now, but I imagine it, you know, uh, as we learn more and there's more data available, depending on the nature of your business, right? What, you know, marketing, we always say those things like, it's all about sending the right message to the right person at the right time. And, you know, what do we do? We typically will say, all right, you know, set up some automations and you're creating a segment of customers and you're, using that segment and then kind of guessing for the whole of that group still. But the reality is even within that group, there are individuals in there that have different, you know, buying patterns and usages and things like that. And so like if, I, you know, I drink one coffee, uh, one coffee a day, Scott, do you drink coffee? Yeah, more than one. More than one, right? So if we're ordering coffee, you're going to need coffee before I'm going to need coffee, right? And so I think the promise of how AI can start to, really start to understand that and notice those patterns and then make the recommendation to you and say, Hey, um, maybe you should send Dave an email about, you know, an educational email, let's say, right. Cause you typically, right. You're going to fall between e educational emails and promotional emails. I'm going to send Dave on Tuesday, an educational email about such and such, uh, at this time, because this is when he likes to open emails, but I'm going to send Scott an email about an offer to buy more things because he's probably running low right now, right? And then this is the time he likes to open them. And so you really get to this place where actually what you're doing is sending the right message to the right person 
at the right time versus, you know, a, a smaller group of people, which is still good, but it, it just adds a whole other layer to this that I think at the end of the day will end up helping you uh, uncover sales in a way that you just manually, you can't do, right? You can't process the data that fast. And I think that's actually the most exciting piece of, of what's going on with AI. Um, that is not a, maybe not as accessible uh, than saying like, look what, look what chat GPT can create. Right. So uh, that's where things I think start to get really interesting. Yeah. It's like the irony of, of personalization is that um, it's enabled by automation. So, so in other yeah, words, uh, exactly something right. that's not human makes <laughs> the brand seem more human. But I think the, the personalization of it, though, right, comes down to the timeliness and the relevance of it, right? And that's what makes it personal. Like, I think we sometimes right. err on the side of, and I'm not saying this is not true, like you should, particularly for a small business, I think your advantage is feeling more personal, like a person is writing that and sending exactly. it to you, right? Mm -hmm. But it's really about the timeliness and the relevance of the message I'm receiving. If I'm feeling like, oh, this is exactly what I need right now the opportunity for me to take a, an action or do something is greater, right? Yeah. Well, you know, even if you're a small business, the number of people that can interact with you through your online presence can be a lot. And if you're small, you can get overwhelmed a lot faster if you try to do it at, you know, one-on-one -on -one as a, as a an individual. And, you know, one way that, especially when speaking with small businesses that I, I talk about marketing versus sales, because, you know, in a lot of businesses, um, you know, the on the online presence hasn't been a big factor in how they've grown. Mm -hmm. They haven't really done a lot of marketing per se. They've had salespeople who, who, who sell their product and, and, but they want to grow. And I'm like, well, think of the, your marketing efforts as, being able to scale the things that that salesperson does. And what does the good salesperson do? The salesperson forms those personal relationships. Well, yep. at a certain point, that's not scalable. You can't hire enough salespeople. And so using the kind of tools that you're describing to scale that kind of personal touch, um, it would seem like it would be even more important for small businesses. Yeah, because you just don't have the, the bandwidth to do it, right? We talked about that that time. There are so many hats you have to wear as a small business owner. And I think I think the thing to level set here too, because like I'm not into like, you know, the sh scaring anybody into things or things like that, because I think the reality is you can, you know, the businesses that I've talked to, their success is based on some simple things. Having a consistent form of communication typically via an email <laughs> and doing that, like, let's say weekly, right? Most of the people I've talked to that have been really successful do a weekly email. They don't really do anything more advanced than that, right? right? I think what's interesting is start there. I think we sometimes as humans, we, we get into this place where we want to jump ahead and try to do the more advanced thing or, or say like, uh, that's too easy. Like that can't work. Right. <laughs> right. And I'm like, no, no, do that simple thing. Lay that foundation because that's going to start working for you. Or you're going to start to see the results of that. And then my hope is always, okay, now that you've got something working, it, it, this frees you up a little bit, right? Because you're hopefully making more sales, you're making more money. You're not feeling that stress of, you know, trying to make the business work as much. And it frees you up to say, okay, like, well, what else could I do? Right. And then this is where you start to add those other layers on top of it. It's like where you start to add the automation. It's where you start to do these other things. And I think um, when you start to do that, that's where you really start to see these things happen. And, and you're right. Like, I think when you look at the tools available, I think the big thing today is, you know, the social media is an interesting one, right? Because it demands so much of you and does help with reach and awareness and those types of things. But time and time again, we're in situations. I just had a friend who, you know, was messaging me the other day that was like, um, my, my, my Facebook account got shut off. So I'm starting a new one. I couldn't figure out how to do anything with it. And I've seen this happen with business owners where they have a Facebook page or they have something and everything's kind of driven by algorithms. And you end up, unless you've got a team dedicated to, you know, play the game, 
you really want to get to this place where you're moving people closer to your business, getting a, a, an email address, getting a, a cell phone number, doing those things that, that you have the direct contact with the customer. Because it's through that direct contact that it changes the game, right? Because usually somebody is raising their hand to say, hey, I really do want to hear about your business. So you've got a more qualified person that wants to do that. And again, you're able to say, this is when I want to contact that person, or this is when I want to do that. And, and you're reaching them in a place that is more personal than just the, 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 the Facebook feed or the, the Instagram feed or something like that, right? And so it's about not necessarily choosing one of these channels um, over the other. I think it's really about using them together, but with the idea that I'm going to move someone from one place and bring them closer to my business, which will ultimately lead to something that is profitable for me in terms of like an action that the, the customer will take. Um, how big um, a portion of constant contact customer base are uh, e-commerce companies? Ooh, that's a great question. I don't know if I know that number off the top of my head. You think um, it's small percentage, big percentage? I, I would probably say, I would say the majority of our customers are folks that are, uh, I would say, uh, uh, small businesses like brick and mortar stores um, mm -hmm. or that road. Retailers, of, things like that, or what, what Retailers, types? shops, restaurants, uh, diners, um, food, like that type of thing, but also nonprofits. Um, and real estate is another one that is, is pretty big for us. Um, there is an e-commerce. Like realtors or who, who in real estate? Realtors? Yeah, yeah re re folks that are selling real estate, uh, mm -hmm. so showing houses, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I don't know the exact numbers on the on the real estate thing. I'm sorry, the the, the retail, uh, the e-com thing. But mm -hmm. uh, we do have a number of those that, you know, and I think this is where things get interesting, where, again, as I mentioned, the whole data thing is where you know, we're, we're, you're able to integrate with a, a platform like, uh, Shopify or, you know, uh, the WooCommerce or big commerce, those types of things, and use that data on top of the data that you're already getting and combine that to learn more about your customers and make those changes. Yeah. Well, I, I just think about things that are evolving and you've got to think for more and more small businesses, <clears throat> you know, recognizing a, a next step after you start realizing the potential of the online channel is, is realizing, oh, I can do more than set up a phone call through this. Yeah. You know, I can actually... Yeah complete a transaction because the data keeps showing that more and more, a higher and higher percentage of the sales process is conducted by the customer on their own. Before they even reach out to and, you, right? Yeah. And to the point where, you know, it used to be halfway through, I working in, with a lot of B2B tech companies, you know, they, for a long time, yeah, oh, they have to talk to our salespeople. They'll never get what they need from life. And then little by little, Later and later in the process, do they actually talk to a salesperson? So I was just curious in terms of uh, for for constant contacts client base, if 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 it's just kind of if we think about things that about AI and how that's going to transform everything. If we're, if we're seeing this inevitably, obviously, if you're well, I was going to say if you're a restaurant or uh, yeah. that, it, you know, then you have to go in, 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 in person. But obviously you don't now. Uh, we've worked with this clients who have 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 put the back in. So uh, customer uh, re restaurants who traditionally just did the, you know, traditional restaurant service are doing adding, being able to deliver or being, you know, adding those kind of components to it so you can order through their website, which they've never done before. So I'm curious if that's a trend that you guys have seen at all or, or what something that you might expect. Well, I, I look at it like this and I often explain it like this is that, you know, when you think of what's happening online, it, it, I guess a couple of things. One, it's very easy to get um, abstracted almost, right? When you say marketing, sometimes like you, it's almost like, oh, you get a different stance and like, you know, I'm going to put my marketing hat on and you, and it's like, you forget about all those things that have made your business successful to this point, which is right. Building relationships, getting people to know, like, and trust you and that whole thing. And so really, you know, we kind of describe it as it's, it's, you're really doing the same process, but what's happening to your point is that if somebody hears about your business, they're either searching for you directly, right? Because somebody has said like, Oh yeah, you should go check out, you know, such and such. And so, okay plug that in and they're going to see what comes up. So what comes up? I think this is a good exercise for any business owner to say like, all right, let me search the name of my business. Those things on that first page, probably those, you know, 
maybe less than 10 listings, right? Those are going to be the things that people are going to look at. And what's happening is as the user looking at this business, I am, or the potential customer, let's say, I'm starting to form um, whether or not this is a business that I want to do business with, right? And again, this 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 depends on, there's a difference between someone buying a slice of pizza and, you know, a thousand dollar piece of software, right? Of course. And so those things are going to be different. Right. The reality is it starts the same. And so you want to have things in those places that allow you to start to tell that story. And, and people want to feel like, okay, is this thing for me? And they're watching and they're looking and they're, they're again, they're getting closer and closer. And, and oftentimes it's just, um, it's almost uh, reassuring them that what somebody else told them is correct, right? And so you're looking at those things. And I think that's one piece of it. So you need to be in those places, I think, when you're thinking about that. The other way people will find you, of course, is if they're looking specifically for the types of things that you offer. So we're talking, they're not looking, searching for your name, but they're searching how to do something or I need such and such, right? So that's another area to think about as well. But then from there, it's about having the right tools in place, right? It's about making sure you have a website. I, I, I think we've talked you know, time and time again, there's this, well, I don't have a, I don't need a website because I have a Facebook page, right? We've already kind of talked about that idea of like, well, but what if, you know, Facebook does something, makes a sweeping change, you get locked out of your page and you're relying on that, you're not in a good situation, right? And so it's about Again, using those tools because I think, you know, Facebook, the, the X is, uh, is that how you say that now? But, you know, all of those things are going to pop up, right? Because they have that search value that will allow somebody to find you. And so, again, it's just another piece of the story. But you want to have your own places. So you're building that. And then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, moving those people closer to you. And so I think it's, you know, less about talking through kind of like the, the the things that we would talk about, right. As marketers, right. As like official marketers and saying like, you know, you get, there's your SEO up to date, you know, and all of the, using these terms. And it's really about like, just think about what you do on a daily basis. Well, guess what? Your customer is doing the same thing. And so just make sure you're in the right places so that they find you. <laughs> right. And, and I think if you can think of it simplified like that, it takes away some of the overwhelm uh, it takes away some of maybe the anxiety of, you know, associated with doing those tasks and it just makes it simpler. And I think that's how, you know, I often try to look at it. And I know we try to, again, create resources that at constant contact that and the tools that just simplify that process and, and make it easier uh, and for people to take those actions. Yeah, that's cool. I just realized we have uh, dueling pictures of plant life behind our heads. <laughs> I know. I went, ooh, I, I wonder who would win in a fight. <laughs> we'll have to see if we can, uh, maybe we can get a AI to combine something and see what happens. <laughs> well, well uh, I appreciate your time. Let me ask you one last question, which is sure. um, I'll put you on the spot and say, what's a, what would be one kind of wild, hairy, unexpected prediction possibility related to AI and small businesses that you could see happening next year or in some real reasonable time frame that that people might not be thinking about or expecting today oh that's an interesting one um oh, i'm the worst at predictions too but i would say i think the way ai will allow the businesses that are focused on and because i think this is a different thing too is because you mentioned like the apples and the big tech companies and things like that and a lot of folks even when you think of in the b2b space are even if they start in the small business world, um, they are often moving up market very quickly because it's difficult to, to sell in the, in the small business space. Mm -hmm. But I think what will be interesting is, you know, and I think of the work that, you know, we're doing is if you stay um, dedicated to that audience that we're trying to reach, the possibilities of what they're able to do on autopilot, where they're just checking in on things versus having to pull them away from their business in the day to day. I think that's what's going to really be uh, interesting and exciting to folks because it's going to allow them to get to those next places that they're trying to get without, um, without having to, to learn a whole new system or learn a whole new thing. That's your future constant contact tagline. <laughs> Put your marketing on autopilot. <laughs> yeah. But that's what people want, right? They don't have to want to have to worry about it. And of course, you yeah. make things a lot easier for people, but you know, it can always become easier, right? It can always become something that they have to spend less and less time on um, to get better and better, more personalized results, services, and so forth. So um, and I guess that's what everyone in the 
constant contact workshop is focused on these days. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Well, thanks for taking the time, Dave. Uh, really a really great opportunity to meet you and uh, good luck to you. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, great to meet you too. And uh, yeah, appreciate the opportunity. Let me know uh, where this lives when it's when it's out. I'd love to check it out and share okay. it. Okay, for sure. I will. All right, Scott. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. 